Good morning everybody, Pastor Drew from The Lighthouse. It's so good you could join us today. I've just brought us out tours today because this is the location, beautiful location of our Hope Week next week, the week before Easter. We're starting here on Wednesday the 12th and Thursday the 13th of April. We're hosting Pastor Matt Richards and his team from Radical Church on their Hope Bus, a double-decker bus, which we're gonna use as the base here at Brands Golf for Outreach. It's got a cafe type area, seating area downstairs. We're gonna have some praise, some worship. We're gonna preach the gospel. We're gonna see people come to know Jesus. We're gonna see signs, miracles, and wonders. It's gonna be a phenomenal time. So I ask that if you can make it, that you come down during that time. Uh, there'll be a link in the, in the uh, description about the full details. So please click on that but please come and join us it'll be fantastic to see you here bring a friend bring someone who doesn't know Jesus we are then launching on the Friday evening the Hope Knows the Wave Cafe uh, which is targeted at the youth and we look forward to, to opening that on the Friday it's going to be the grand opening and we, we really want to encourage you to let people know that it's there really the place where people can come and get something to eat and hang out and hear about Jesus we're so excited what God's doing here in Sandown if you'd like to be part of it please contact us the details are in the description below while I uh, go and find somewhere a bit more comfortable to sit so I can bring you a message please just check this video out that we're going to show now about why you should read your Bible more often and what the effects are Take care, God bless, enjoy the rest of the day. There was a recent study by the Center for Bible Engagement where they pulled 40,000 uh, uh, general population in the U.S. from 8 to 80, and they just wanted to see how we are engaging with Scripture. Right. And they discovered something that actually became kind of the profound discovery of the entire study. It, they weren't even looking for this, and this is kind of became the highlight of the study. Right. Um, when we're in the scripture one time a week, and that could be church on Sunday, that's pastor saying you open your Bible, we hear the message, one time a week had negligible effect on some key areas of your life. So I'll, I'm going to spell that out more here in a moment. Two times a week, negligible effect. Now at three times a week, there was a blip on the map, like there was a heartbeat. Something happened, again, a heartbeat. Okay. But here was a profound discovery. When we're in the scripture four times a week, it literally spikes off the chart. You would expect that it'd be one, two, th I mean, there'd be a gradual incline right. on the effect and impact that would have in your life, but it was literally one, two, three, four, something radically happens. Okay, you got my curiosity. To this what, extent. What kind of behavior is being affected? Feeling lonely drops 30%. Wow, Ang four times a week in the four Bible. Four times a week in the Bible. Okay. Anger issues drop 32%. Uh, bitterness in relationships, marriage, a relationship with your kids, and so on, drops 40%. Alcoholism drops 57%. Feeling spiritually stagnant. You know, if there was one area when I'm talking with people that, that they'll be honest about is they just feel spiritually stagnant. Ask them the question, how much time are you spending in Scripture? If they're in the Scripture four times a week or more, it drops 60%. Wow. Viewing pornography drops 61%. That's very important. Now, on a flip positive side, sharing your faith wow. jumps 200%. Wow. Because you have a confidence in God's word. And then discipling others jumps 230%. That's, that's amazing right there. Well, good morning, everybody. Yes, um, I have found myself a spot to sit in the car. I'm still in the Browns Golf car park, but welcome to the Lighthouse UK. It's so great that you could join us today. Uh, please take a moment uh, to, to look at the calendar and the events, the what's on. Um, that will have all the details regarding the event, but also if you haven't already subscribed to the channel, like this video, it helps to get these videos out and about and the algorithms of YouTube push the video out to those who may find this useful and need to hear this message. I hope the last video from John Bevere blessed you, it really blessed me. What amazing statistics. I think we can all learn something that we can all spend a little bit more time reading our Bible. I've got a, a short message for you today, which was really a continuation of the message I brought um, 
a few weeks back uh, we've had a few weeks off from some content we've uh, had uh, taken a break from 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 work and and all that sort of stuff so we've we've just really now start to to bring some new content up onto our channel uh, so keep your eyes peeled we'll start seeing more much more of that take place uh, we have will we will be bringing some content from the hope bus week which is going to be fantastic so so keep make sure you hit that notification bell to keep all those updates in your inbox with that aside i'm going to continue with the message so the first message part of this if you want to go back is a message called got par and it, it, i'm a, a little bit of a, uh, a golfer I'm more of a hacker than a golfer uh, and we happen to be on brown's golf course which is a pitch and put and put in place so not a better place to 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 be than to talk about a golfing analogy and got par p-a-r it's a par so i'm the message was that we had to to have posture we have to have alignment and rhythm we have to have posture with god we have to have alignment with god. we have to have a rhythm with god so that was the first message go back and take a look at it and this is really a continuation of that or an expansion of that and and the, and the message it, title is faith time now there are many of you who have android phones like myself and there are many of you who have that other brand uh, now they have a, an app on there called facetime i think it's a bit flaky uh, but it, it works or oh, you might know things like zoom or whatsapp calling all of these sort of things it's about it's a play in the words of, of, of facetime so i'm talking about having some face time with god it's a time of of not just giving your shopping list of requests to god but a really time of dwelling in his presence and that's going to give you good parts going to give you good posture it's going to give you good alignment it's going to give you good rhythm we need to look back at some examples and one example that springs to mind is Moses now we know and we can clearly see that he spent a great deal of time in the presence of Lord God and we know that because we we see here in the Bible when the, the Israelites see it had been there for days he comes down and his face is glowing red with the glory of of God hallelujah how many people and I count myself all the messages I ever bring always uh, God gives them to me first for my discipleship for my development and often says look if it's helped you it's gonna help others so I have to ask myself how much time do I spend in God's presence that when people see me out and about they see nothing but God's glory they see Jesus in me they see the love of the Father and they see the gifts and the fruit of the Holy Spirit I'm not sure that I do that terribly successfully so I need to encourage myself to do this to more and spend some more face time with God so, so so why do we do that though well when you're spending some time with God and you're joining this present God gets a hundred percent not fifty percent not sixty percent not two percent but a hundred percent of you when you're focused purely new it'll be one of the very few times in your working day in your life day which when you're looking after children or doing a school and be the only time really when you you take that time and really dwell in God's presence when he will get a hundred percent of you now, I've often said before, I, I ranted and ranted at God the one day, I said, why don't you answer my prayers? And he butted in and he said, well, if you shut up and let me talk to you, then I will speak to you. Sometimes we just need to sit and listen. We need to wait on the Holy Spirit for him to know. Now, he may talk to us through the word of God, through the, the written word of God in our, our, our Bibles. He may he may have a, a conviction and impressing in our hearts. We, we would, and I've yet to hear it myself, but the audible voice of God. Many, many ways that the Lord God can speak to us. But we need to ensure that we have a 100% focus on him. Another thing I think is good to dwell in his presence is we see it's almost a, it's a foreshadowing like practicing for being in heaven. We're going to spend a lot of time in heaven. Uh, those who are God's children, of course, we're going to spend a lot of time in heaven. And this is a practice of, of how we behave, of how we respond and how we interact with God. So it's a great time to just get some practice in and, and really start tasting that the first few drops of heaven here on earth so that's point two so the first point is god gets 100 percent of your time second point is it's a practice for heaven or a forerunner for heaven 
The third one about dwelling in his presence is there is power in prayer. Lots of times we see and we, we, we make prayers and we say prayers and we might not always see the fruit there and then, but the seed has been sown. The prayer will be answered. God is not a man that he should lie. He tells us that in his word that if we ask in something in Jesus name, he will do it. And how to think of also that the, the Apostle Paul in Romans 4, 17 says it, in prayer, it calls into existence the things that do not yet exist. Sometimes when we, we cannot see stuff. Just a, a recent example of that last night, uh, Pastor Matt was trying to find some diesel fuel for the bus. There's a in Norfolk where they come from, in Norwich where they come from, there's a, a kind of a shortage on fuel. He'd gone to many garages and and and, 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 and it took jerry cans, they wouldn't let him fill those up. He couldn't get in to get the bus in anywhere uh, and we have been having a prayer meeting with the team for mission isle of white and we prayed specifically we called in to that fuel i think it was around 11 o'clock we got a message that pastor matt had managed to get the bus in somewhere and filled the bus with fuel so they are now going to be on their way down to the island so we not always see instant responses, but we will see responses. God will answer our prayers. Maybe not always the way that we think they should be answered, but the way that a good father would answer them. We need to be patient. We need to look at look at Daniel, don't we? Because we see that that uh, as I said about that, he waited twenty one days for answer. But the, the but but the the answer was he. The angel said to him. The messenger said to him. Look, I said the prayer was answered on the first day. But I've toiled with the Prince of Persia for 21 days in those in the heavenlies, in the heavenlies. Um, and so we just have to have some patience and keep interceding and pressing in for those things that we want to see happen. Sometimes God wants to see our commitment to what He we are asking Him to do. And my final scripture for today then is one Thessalonians five sixteen through eighteen, and if you read that in full, but basically my paraphrase is rejoice always. We should always rejoice, pray without ceasing. Now that doesn't necessarily mean that we're walking around speaking in tongues and everything we do. That's a pretty good idea, I have to say anyway. But it does mean that we're constantly we have prayer on our mind. We can we can think in our spirit mind as well as our physical mind that we can actually pray. We when we shot, we can pray for people as we walk past. We see people in wheelchairs. We can pray for them. We can do much much things. We can pray without ceasing. And no matter what happens, we should give thanks in all circumstances. We do not know the reasons why things take place, but we should be giving thanks in all circumstances. So I challenge you today after after listening to the message uh, and really feeling where I've been convicted. When was the last time you really spent some faith time with God? Thank you so much for listening to the message. Um, I hope it's benefited you. I hope it's it's blessed you. Please, as I said at the beginning, please like and sh share and subscribe that to the, the channel, etc. So we get these videos out. There is a a, a a link to the Four Points Gospel, which is uh, on here. This this uh, uh, this symbols here that we've put on along with our People Must Know T-shirt. If you need to know and you want to hear a gospel message, please click the link uh, or connect with with us as a channel. All the links are in the description. We look forward to seeing you soon, sometime at Hope house the home of the lighthouse uh, we've got the the hope bus week taking place here at brown's goal so god bless be highly favored we look forward to seeing you soon